Welcome back, dragon folk, to another episode of I Teach People How Things Work. So, <laughs> today we're actually going to be talking about boosters, right? Uh, this is kind of an educational thing for people maybe just getting into magic, or even something along the lines of like a parent buying their child magic cards, or something along these lines. Just something to think about. So for this video, like I said, we are going to go over the different types of packs, right? So this pack here is a draft booster pack. So if you hear anybody say anything about draft booster pack, that's what this is. I also have the price. I bought all of these at Target. Uh, the big box store, Target, right? Um, normally, the deal is is that you're actually going to be paying more per pack at a big box store. And that is just kind of how things work. Um, that's how they are. They have to make this fancy packaging. They have to do this. I mean, this whole thing, there's only one pack in here. And they have to do all that because of looks and flair and so on and so forth and because they don't sell entire boxes at the stores. So... When looking at stuff like this, I kind of want to give you an idea. We'll go uh, kind of pack by pack and let you guys know what's going on. But we'll actually start with the Draft Booster Pack. So this is part of the new set. So this is from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Uh, one of the newer sets, right? There, there will be, you'll see something along the lines of this. It'll say Magic, it'll have cards in it and so on and so forth. And it's in this little box. So... The deal with this is you can buy this at Target. I think it's right around the same price for Walmart as well, maybe a little bit less expensive. But it is $4.19 before tax, so roughly about $4.50 after tax for a draft booster pack. Now, I want to give you guys an example. Um, at local game stores, which you can, there's more than likely a local game store in your area, but if there isn't, uh, you know, hopefully you can try opening one up, maybe. But at local game stores, you'll see them sold in boxes. Uh, boxes come with, or a draft booster box, I should say, is what it's called. Those come with 36 of these packs inside of them. Not, not wrapped like this. They look a little bit more like... This. That's just one pack, right? So with that one pack, there are 15 cards inside of it, right? One of them being a token. Um, and that is kind of how this is run. So at a local game store, though, fun fact, you can actually get these packs for cheaper. Um, normally, I mean, most, most places, depending on the product, um, LGSs, or local game stores, I'm going to call them LGSs for the sake of the video, they all price their stuff differently, usually based on the open market. So if you go to someplace like TCG Player, right? TCG Player says that a pack, one pack of this, before shipping, sells online for about $3.80. So here nor there, I've seen local game stores sell these draft packs for $3 a piece. Uh, some of them even make it so you can you can buy three for seven dollars or you can buy five for for ten dollars or twelve dollars or whatever it is right like some local game stores have promotions where if you buy a certain amount of stuff in their store they give you a stamp on a stamp card and then you can redeem that for more packs there's more of a if you're going to make this a hobby right definitely go more towards looking for LGS stuff. I always say suggest I always suggest going to buy at LGS anyway because they are going to be cheaper. Like I said, this is about $4.50 I paid after tax for this little pack where you could pay $3 at a local game store and support a small business as opposed to supporting a big business. So, definitely a big deal there. So, in these draft packs, there are some cards. Every set will differ depending on what cards are in it. Uh, each set is different, but we'll kind of go over just the general idea of what these packs are. So, 
This is also, fun fact, my first opening of Kamigami and Dynasty, so hopefully I get some good stuff. So, you'll start off, you'll get, like I said, 15 cards. One of them is going to be a token at the end of this pack. You're also guaranteed less rares in this set. So, less rares um, means the the amount of, you know, good, like, crazy rare cards you get out of here is not going to be as great. So... Uh, don't worry too much about getting the rares or about getting like crazy stuff. That's why there are more expensive packs. This is the lowest end pack you can get. And it is for that reason specifically that they do not put a ton in, in there. Okay, we got a Takanuma Abandoned Mire. So this is the rare from the set. This is, there's several rares in here um, in the set entirely. Uh, we also got a Prosperous Thief as our... Um, as our little foil there. So usually have a, you have a chance at a foil. And then there is a land and a token card, like I had said. So with that being the case, that is what comes in a draft booster pack. You get the most amount of cards in a pack, uh, 15. And you get a bunch of the more common cards. And usually on, on average, one rare or mythic. Uh, but sometimes there are two rares or mythics in there. Sometimes there's, you know, I've seen three rares in a draft booster pack. But it all depends. It's all depending on what goes on. So, like I said, buy, if you have the ability to and you're not just like, oh crap, I'm at Walmart and I forgot to get my kid a gift, go to a local game store and buy a pack from there. Because not only are you not getting a blister pack, which is what these are called, Blister packs are just kind of like like random card or like random packs thrown into there. I don't believe they're from an actual box, but that's kind of how that works. Whereas if you go to a local game store, you get them for about usually a dollar ish cheaper, and you uh, and you get the opportunity to uh, support a local business, and uh, you may even pull the uh, you know a really really great you know, card out of there, too. It's the same style of pack, right? You're still able to only get, like, one... You On average, get one Mythic or Rare. But depending on the pack, on the, the box or something like that, there very well could be more, could be less, yada, yada. Drafts are a little weird in that regard. So, totally understandable. So, next on the list for our sets is the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set boosters. So, set booster down here, what this means... And it doesn't tell you in front. Oh, no, it does. This only has 12 cards in it. Now, it also says guaranteed foil and art card. So you're at least going to be guaranteed one foil card in this set. Even though it could be common or uncommon, like this one is. Um, it could be rare. It could be mythic. There are also higher chances of getting more mythics and rares in set boosters. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why they dropped the card amount to 12. But it is what it is, right? Uh, set boosters do come with these little art cards in the front, though, which is really cool because the art cards have their own special thing. I'll show you what an art card looks like when we open it up. But this is a set booster. So, like I said, um, essentially the whole concept is that there's less cards in this pack. Not to mention, it is more expensive. This pack cost me a dollar more at Target, so this was $5.50 after tax, while online, it actually goes for about $4 and, like, 25 cents or something. Uh, I have seen some LGSs sell these for only 50 cents more than their uh, draft packs. So draft packs are $3 at a local game store, Set boosters are about $3.50, right? Because they get them out of a box. There are only 30 of these in the box, as opposed to 36 with the draft. So you have less packs in that box. So it kind of equals itself out. But it ends up working out to be the same, and they end up being cheaper because they're from the box. You essentially just take whatever the box price is. Uh, usually a box of this is costing like anywhere between... 100 to 110 dollars so you're getting some extra stuff in there as well and you get more packs to open 
uh, and you don't have to pay three dollars and fifty cents a pack, you'll end up paying whatever the you know one hundred and ten divided by thirty is. So ends up roughly to be right about that. But like I said, um, more local stuff. Looking for it, and I wouldn't worry about buying these. Five dollars a pack is pretty steep for these. Um, especially since they come with less cards, and one of those cards in here is not even a card you can play. The art cards that come in this pack do not, you can't use them for play. They are only for collection purposes, and they don't do anything else. Okay, so this is the art card that they're talking about, right? Just like it, all it is, is just an art piece. So you can do this, you can flip it over, right? And it's just an art card. So... Art is what it is. Then we get into the commons, right? And you'll see there's some stuff that looks like a little different than others. That's just a showcase thing. We can go over that in a different video. But it's all still the same thing. You're still looking at your commons. And then your uncommons are up next. And then you have your uh, rares in the back. So... This is going to be our next... I realize I'm putting them too far up. Boseju, boom. March of Wretched Sorrows is our rare here. And this is our foil, which is Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So that's kind of neat. Oh, the other thing. Oh, this is actually the one, I think. Neat. This is the showcase version of it, so we're going to go ahead and leave that right up there. Um, and then the other thing that you get out of here, with one of those cards being an art card, you also have access to this thing called the list. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the list is, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Essentially what it is, is you have a chance to get an old card, uh, a card from a set that is no longer printed in this thing called the list. And in this, uh, you know, you get there's a, a whole bunch of different cards that you can get. But for the most part, um, there's not really a ton of stuff that's great in the list. Sometimes you get lucky. But like this, for instance, this is just a common card. I don't actually know what set this is from. I'm going to look it up, but it's just a common. So we're going to kind of leave that right there as it is. So, so far, we're not doing too bad um, as far as actual, like, pulls go. But like I said, you know, we got lucky there with the two rares. Um, our rare, our guaranteed foil is, in fact, a rare, so that's really nice. Now, here's where the kicker is, right? So the kicker for all of this is as follows. Collector boosters. There's only one pack in here. There are 15 cards. And the chance of you getting very, very high value cards in these collector boosters are very good. Uh, the whole point of a collector booster is that it is a more expensive product that contains more expensive rare versions of cards for, you guessed it, collectors, right? So, you think, okay, great, I'll get a collector booster, right? When you buy a collector booster from the store, uh, I actually was pretty surprised, but I still don't think it's a great idea. This is uh, $27.99. Yeah, $27.99 is what I paid for this at Target, right? Now, on the shelf, it said $29.99, which is what I expected to pay. So roughly you're looking at about $28 bucks plus for this pack right here. $28, right? Remember, the draft pack was only three was only $4.50. The set booster that we just opened was only like $5.50. This is a huge jump to $28 for one pack. And the reason that it's so expensive in this specific regard is because look at all this packaging. I mean, you this packaging is crazy. You They have to do all of this in regards to um, making sure that it stays sealed because if it's not sealed, right, I mean, there's, there's so many things that can go wrong. These are, like I said, the money packs. Uh, this is where you find a lot of your very rare, very, very... Uh, very, what do you call it? Um, just like insanely crazy cards. So you'll see here, right? We open it up. We've opened it up like this. And now we got to lift this up, right? And then inside here is our booster to which we then 
throw this whole thing out because we don't need it and it's all garbage. Luckily, I think this is all cardboard, so it can be recycled, which is great, but still very annoying to get through. Uh, they do that for, obviously, theft reasons. Um, they also get this little goop on the back of them here, so just take that off. And so this, like I said, is $27.99 a pack, so about $28. Um, and when you buy a box of these, it comes with 12 packs. So 12 packs at $27.99 would equal out the entirety of the box. But if you go to a LGS, they may be cheaper. Currently online, it looks like people are selling them for as low as $25, uh, which is only a couple bucks less, believe it or not. I guess after shipping and everything, it's about $26 a piece. So theoretically, you pay another like $2 for convenience, and it's not too bad. But if you buy a box that comes with 12, right? Let's say you bought, let's say you bought 12 individual packs of this, right? You'd be paying roughly over $300, whereas currently, even though this collector box is very expensive compared to what they usually are, this collector box only goes for like $270 for the 12 packs. So you'd be paying, if you bought these individually, you'd be paying more per pack than you would be if you just saved up and bought a box instead. Opening a box is a lot better too because you get it all in one time and so on and so forth, but this is the collector booster for this. Like I said, 15 cards, you have a chance at more rares, and uh, I think just about everything in here is foil, if I recall correctly. So it's one of those ones you gotta kinda be um, good with, and these are for, I mean, these are for collectors only. I would not make, you know, make sure that if you're bringing this to the register at your, at your Target or your Walmart, that, oh my god, this is just not opening for me today, is it? I want you opened, please. I realize they are really hard to open, too. Holy crap, please, please, I would like you to be opened. I want to open you. We'll take a pause while I open this. Okay. I have opened it. So, essentially the concept here is that they are more expensive packs, and they are expensive because they contain more expensive cards inside of them, yada yada, so on and so forth. You get the drill. But they are good for collectors. If you are looking to be a collector... I highly recommend buying the set um, or buying the collector boosters if you can afford them because they do have really great cards in them. Uh, they also feel real thick in comparison, which is real strange, but um, I think it's just the foiling in there. So like I said, you'll see that almost every one of these cards is going to be foil. So that's kind of neat. So you get these out of here, right? These are some extra stuff. It also comes with, sometimes it'll comes with crazy, crazy lands like this. Uh, this is a special land for this set, so I really like how these look. And then, of course, you have, um, you know, just like the other stuff after it. But after these four cards, right, this is where it gets crazy. So now you have a bunch of other stuff in regards to this. You have a lot of, like, uh, we'll throw you right here. Uh, you have a lot of rares, right? So like this stack, right? There's still a lot, and there's a lot of rares here. Rares and mythics and so on and so forth. So we have incentive iteration, inventive iteration. That's my bad. Here we go. That's actually a foil. We'll put you up there. Uh, and a lot of different versions of cards come in here too. So it's kind of one of those ones. Okay. All right. We got a Timeo. Completed Sage for our mythic there. It's good. Mukatai Soul Ripper. I don't think I have a place for mythics, do I? Right there, that's where the place is for the Mythics. Okay, Soul Ripper and Biting Palm Ninja. So you'll see we got, what, one, two, three, four, five rares in that pack and a token. Yeah, so like five rares in that pack and a token. No, I'm sorry, four rares and a Mythic. So not too bad. Um, like I said, those go for a lot. Um, cards like this go for a lot. This is a borderless Tameo completed sage. So, 
Uh, there's a lot of different forms of cards that come in the collectors. So if you're looking for a fun thing for your kid or for somebody else who plays Magic to get into, and you have the money to afford them a pack, go to an LGS. You can go to an LGS and you can go ahead and pick up a, a one pack, right? One pack of a collector booster if they have any in the store. Uh, and then if you can't find it in store and you want them to open something like this, you can order them online. If you don't want to order them online, you can go to Walmart or Target and pick it up. But like I said, you're paying even for all of these packs, right? All these packs that are open, you're still paying like significantly, like maybe like a dollar, two dollars, maybe even three dollars more for each pack than you would if you just went to an LGS that sells these things all the time. They'll sell for a little bit more or a little bit less. You know what I mean? So if you're trying to save some money, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, the store owners will also be pretty um, educated in the matter. So they will also help you in regards to doing something like that. I always enjoy opening stuff like this. And I want people to know what to look for, right? We have the draft booster, which was just 15 cards, right? Not a lot of rares in it and not a lot of foils. The set booster, which comes with 12 cards, that gets you an art card and a possible uh, list card, but that's rare in and of itself too. Then you have the collector booster, which costs like five times the amount of the other packs, but it comes with more rares, more foils, special foils cards and stuff like that. And more chance at Mythics. Um, for this set specifically, there's even one that's like, you know, you open it up and there's a chance to get a, a, a one in like 100,000 card or something. Uh, some like neon card or whatever. So that's, I mean, I know that, but for you guys, uh, for this set specifically, there's a lot of chase for these collector booster boxes. So that's kind of a kind of a buyer's guide for... Um, Magic the Gathering to kind of show you guys what comes in what. Um, these cards obviously are not going to be in every single pack. Uh, there's hundreds of different cards that all could mix and match within your packs. But just giving you a general idea of a price point and how you should go about buying these cards. Um, and then if you do play the game and you don't want to buy boosters, you can also buy single cards online through TCG Player or Card Kingdom or any of those, and that will also uh, that'll also work. But for the most part, most people are going to buy packs or they're going to buy boxes. Buying a box, personally, if you're going to if you if you want to open a lot of packs, I suggest buying a box. Not because of the fact that it just obviously has a lot of packs and it's not just buying one pack at a time, but because it's cheaper in the long run, right? You know how they do the, you know, you can buy five for, for 15, but if you buy, um, are you, they're, they're each five, you know, each of these packs are $5 a piece. If you buy four of them, you're paying 20 bucks. But if you buy five of them, you pay 16 bucks, right? Kind of the same concept. You, you, you know, you want to buy one pack. If you bought 36 draft packs separately, you'd be paying like a hundred dollars more than you would if you just bought a box. And that's kind of the give and take here, right? I always suggest that if you are going to open up a lot of packs, right? Um, unless you're planning to make it like, a, oh, I just want to open a couple packs at a time here, a couple here, a couple there. And you can't wait to save up money to buy a box. Then, you yeah, go to your local game store, pick up a pack. It'll be cheap. Um, they may even have a deal for you where you can get cards, uh, you can get um, booster packs and other stuff like bundled into a thing to where you get like a deal out of it, right? You can't you can't wheel and deal a Walmart or a Target, you know what I mean? But uh, at a local game store, you can at least see what kind of stuff they have. Some places have deals where. Um, you know, if every fifth tournament you enter, you get a free collect, you know, collector pack or a free draft pack or something. Or even when you do tournaments, right, at local game stores, there's usually 
a buy-in and that gets you a pack and you get more packs if you are higher in the ranking system you know but we'll go over like tournament stuff later this was a buyer's guide for magic the gathering um and if you enjoyed any of this right or found any of this educational please make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel as well if you have not already we like to I like to make these educational videos for people so that way they know what they're getting into when they look at stuff. Uh, I plan to do one for every single set that comes out into the future. So hopefully, you know, let me buy it so you don't have to, but you probably should buy it if you're going to get into magic because it's magic, right? So that is entirely the case. Um, like I said, if you want uh, packs, go out and get them, but get them from a local game store. It's going to be so much easier for you, and they're going to be cheaper, and you're going to be supporting local business. That's just that's just my my two cents here. Um, but if I missed anything in regards to this, or there's something you guys know that I don't, please make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to hear from everybody. Like I said, we're just kind of starting up on our channel, so I'm happy to learn as much as I possibly can if there's somebody who knows something that I don't. Uh, other than that, uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, I hope to do uh, more of these into the future. We're hoping to do some giveaways as we start getting stuff together. I do also have a Patreon down below in the link down below. So if you wanted to go ahead and check that out in the description, that would be much appreciated. Once we start getting a decent amount of patrons in, I'll be able to start doing giveaways and, um, you know, box battles and breaks and so on and so forth. And I'd be more than happy to do that for you because I love opening packs and hopefully you guys will enjoy me opening packs as well. So thank you again, and make sure to drink your water, eat your vegetables, and don't be a dick. And don't buy them from big box stores. Just don't. You, you're spending all this to throw away a bunch of packaging. Don't do that. Don't do what I did. Go to an LGS, buy the packs, buy them there. And if it turns out that they're more expensive than, than your big box store buy them at a big box store. But if they're cheaper, they're usually cheaper at an LGS, go there instead. So thank you again, and I will see you all in the next video. Nerd out.